I see all these people flipping out about these cartoon apes, and I'm like, what? What are these apes? Like, what is going on? One of the best things that NFTs have brought to the table is they have made collecting so accessible to people. All my early collectors are OGs in my mind. But for me, art is like a need. It's not a want, and collecting is just another form of that. I clicked really fast on the people drop, and I actually managed to get it for one dollars. If I've collected your work, I'm holding it with diamond hands. If you're collecting something, it could become hot in two minutes or 200 years. Welcome to the Collector's Call with Particle, where we chat about art with the top collectors and creators in Web3. I'm your host, Scooter, and today our guest is Pablo Fraile, a prominent collector and patron in the digital art world. He and his wife, Desiree Cassoni, curate the RFC Art Collection, which comprises more than 2,000 contemporary artworks with a focus on sophisticated, tokenized digital art. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Pablo. Pablo, welcome to The Collector's Call. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be in this conversation with you as always. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you could join us. I know we've been looking forward to this for, for some time. I'll give a bit of a roadmap for you so you know what to expect. I have a few opening questions, lots, of course, specific to art, and then also some questions specific to collecting, because that's, of course, a forte of yours, and we'd love to hear the thoughts that you can share with us. Does that sound okay to you? That sounds wonderful. I hope that I, that I can be eloquent to, uh, enough to, uh, to give some good answers. Of course, that, that, that sounds lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, you always have uh, wonderful insights to share. So I'm sure this will be the same as usual. Well, to get the ball rolling, Pablo, could you tell us a bit about your background and what led you to begin collecting art? Uh, sure, I'll try to uh, I try to uh, focus uh, on what's relevant here. And apologies if I go a little bit longer Please feel free to intercede. You know, both uh, my wife and I have, uh, have, have, have started our cultural, let's say, appreciations uh, through our families growing up. In my case, I, I was brought up in a house uh, where architecture and art and culture was always very present. When we traveled, always visiting institutions, different museums, different, again, cultural events. And, and then I, I met Desiree uh, very, very early. Uh, we were still teenagers uh, while we were in university. And since we started dating, you know, we've been continuously attending and, 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 and really, you know, uh, art and culture being part of our passion. Obviously, it was different times. We were both students uh, with what that entails. But the first work, uh, sorry, the first gift that I ever gave my wife, and this is a story that I'm very happy to, to, to share often, is, uh, you know, what's, not, what's a work of art by Guillermo Mora, a Spanish artist that I, uh, you know, that, that, that now we both like, but uh, uh, that I like back then and we still have here in the collection at home. And, and honestly, it was just a very organic organic appreciation for for art so we started collecting a completely different again completely different pace and 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 and, and capabilities since we were again teenagers but then my professional life well i'll, I'll make a, a small incision Desi is also she's a she's an architect she's a designer she's a photographer she's a painter herself and and uh and uh, and again it's you know uh creativity just 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 is it's is central to Desi's to Desi's life uh, so as my professional life took me through uh, 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 through where it took me, I, I ended up uh, spending a lot of time in the blockchain since the early days, and and I saw what was happening in the in the in the NFT ecosystem. I understood the technology very well, and we had again a deep appreciation for for the art. So we started being very very active at the beginning, uh, uh, where it was a completely different time. It was literally less than a handful of us uh, as collectors, and and you know a few dozen artists that were a little bit more active, but it was a different time and. We could already sense the, the the incredible explosion of talent innovation, the the amazing community that was being formed, and and the unlocking, no, of uh, of this incredible, you know, you know, wave of creatives that that I guess uh, uh, the world is catching up to see now. Of course, you know, there were so many things to 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 improve along the way, and we we were very active and very close to the artists and everything outside of the creative component. So. Uh, you know, getting you closer to other collectors, which platforms, a uh, 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 structure, pricing, you know, even some personal finance support, uh, some communications, just a little bit what an agent would do for artists. But we always did this without charging a cent. We always did this as a passion, as a hobby, as, a, uh, you know, as, a, as honestly, uh, it's something that we really, really enjoy doing. Throughout this time, obviously, another very important thing happened, or two very important things happened. We were able to develop these friendships with the, with the artists that are a lot more than transactional. Well, there's this trust and influence component that is just uh, beautiful. We travel together. They stay at my home. Uh, uh, I, I stay at their home as well. It's just very, very comprehensive relationship and friendship 
that really transcend any form of 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 of, of transactional relationship. And uh, and and secondary to that as well is that we've been involved, you know, behind what is likely known today as one of the the, the most important, sophisticated, deep, and uh, and just thoughtful. Uh, digital art collections in the in the world, and we try to be very active in in creating that bridge with what I call the regular folks, uh, uh, those of us, uh, those of those of them outside of the digital uh, ecosystem as we are, and trying to again manifest digitally native work in physical locations in a way that feels normalized, in a way that feels like like how like what like what it is to me, which is art, you know, with a capital A, uh, in the same way that any other form of art is art and. That has been our past and our dream, our our focus, and uh, and uh, we're just very happy to be able to uh, you know uh, participate just a little bit in the beautiful uh, journey that is happening in the space at the moment. That's a wonderful introduction, and I'm delighted to hear that your first gift for Desiree was a, a work of art. Very fitting. You wear many hats as a collector, patron, and also investor. How do you navigate the responsibilities associated with these different roles? Well, I mean. Uh, just honestly, just trying to navigate them organically as they come. The, the reality is that our appreciation uh, comes uh, primarily as collectors in the space, as patrons, as, uh, as uh, you know, just generally trying to uh, uh, push the ecosystem forward. And honestly, the, the rest just happens a little bit organically. Everything at the end in life is a little bit tied. We've got into a place, thankfully, and, and you know, we, we understand that we are, you know, we're very thankful and, and privileged to be in this position, but we're in a position where our, our life and, and, and if we want to call it work, I, I guess that, that like work balance, it, it's not a, 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 you know, I turn off at 5 p.m. and then I go into my regular life. It, for me, everything is part of my life. Everything is my journey. Everything is, I, I, you know, there's no weekends, there's no vacations. It's just, you know, what we do uh, in a way somewhat professionally uh, uh, it's also part of our day-to-day -day life. So I try to navigate everything, again, organically. I try to be very collaborative in nature. I try to find the, 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 the great spot where these uh, different activities can overlap in an ethical and, again, organic way and, uh, and, and you know, try to, try, try to navigate this as, 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 as uh, you know, as we can. It's definitely a balancing act, but you sound like you're doing a, a wonderful job of it. You've referenced that you and your, your wife, Desiree, steward the RFC Art Collection. This is a, an unparalleled collection of, of digital and tokenized art. What are your visions and plans for this collection into the future? <laughs> All right. So I really like this, this, this question, and, and, and I want to be mindful because uh, we are really working on what is undoubtedly our, our, our biggest not our biggest, honestly, like uh, our life purpose, our life mission for this year and I, we have decided to 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 take along a, a project that is that I think is gonna is gonna be very positive for digital art as a whole, and 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 certainly we're we're very excited. This is gonna be a, a, a again a, a very 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 important project where we're gonna focus everything, all of our time, all of our resources, all of our all of our collection, everything over time. I'm just unfortunately at this moment I cannot share the details, uh, but I can share that we will be announcing. Something in the not so distant future regarding this idea. But what I can share with this is that, you know, again, for us, most people think that we do this for a living, that the collection is what we do for a living, and it is really not. Uh, the collection is how we, honestly, how we spend uh, 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 our living, and it's, it's what we really, really like to do. So we really want to make sure that that this is this collection is not it's not our internal collection, just what we have in a vault at our home, and and like this, we really want to make sure that this is. Uh, shared and exposed and 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 and, and exhibited and, and and shown you know everywhere in the world and 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 we really want uh, you know uh, you know the all the audience globally to to participate and to engage. Uh, uh, we are again uh, uh, we've been fortunate and enough that, that that we have some some works in the collection that are are truly historically significant in my opinion and uh, and and again uh, let's just say that the plan. Uh, in the future, uh, we'll certainly have a component where this will be more publicly available. Does that make any sense? That makes good sense. And we will be eagerly following for some of those updates that you've hinted at. Lots of exciting things to come. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, you had a hand in orchestrating the acquisition of Rafik Anadol's unsupervised machine hallucinations by the Museum of Modern Art. What's the significance of this acquisition? And what interested MoMA in this particular work of tokenized art? Well, I mean, I think that's a question that has so many possible answers, and and, and honestly, I, I I wonder what's out here 
for not picking, you know, you know, out of line for MoMA. But again, as as everything, and uh, uh, you, uh, you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna be a little bit mad at me uh, at the beginning of this, of this, of this, of, of this call because I'm gonna repeat this word a lot. But it was something that came in very organically. So again, the opportunity, this, you have to understand that this has this started like three, uh, you know, maybe around three years ago or so. Uh, I want to, um, you know, salute here and 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 to the the, the folks at Feral Pile. Uh, that were really instrumental, Casey Riyak and Sean uh, Moss Pools that were really instrumental in, in in making this happen. But the possibility, the possibility of of doing something interesting, th- this was the pandemic time, and the possibility of doing an, an, a project with MoMA came along. And Rafik was the best, uh, you know, the best, uh, you know, probably artist uh, or creative at the moment uh, to try to accomplish something uh, in this domain. And 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 as you know, uh, uh, the exhibition uh, or or the release was done uh, back in the day with. Pretty great success, pretty great attention from the from from the uh, no from the audience, and then the opportunity to actually show it at MoMA uh, uh, came organically through that uh, you know through through the success of that release that was done in collaboration with MoMA. Uh, of course, uh, you know this was an experiment. It was something like the first time that that MoMA had done something of this nature. I think they were extraordinarily both smart, diligent pioneering as well. I thought they were very, very brave uh, in doing something like this. Uh, and, and they were very cautious along the way of, 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 of again, taking everything step by step and making sure uh, of, of respecting the integrity of everything around. So this was a, this was brewed over a very, very long uh, period of time. At the time when, when this exhibition happened, the donation wasn't uh, neither confirmed nor even, nor even necessarily part of the plan. But again, I think that the, the work spoke for itself. And, you know, after spending almost a year, uh, one of the longest permanent exhibitions uh, at the MoMA uh, of this kind, and uh, certainly I, I think the most successful with over 2.5 million in-person visits and countless of dozen other millions of engagements online in every way. To my knowledge, and I want to be mindful here, but to my knowledge, the first, uh, the, sorry, the most successful exhibition ever, a humongous inflow of a diverse audience from all different uh, places in life, uh, from all different ages, from all different backgrounds. Just an incredible appreciation. And 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 also they were clocking the amount of time that people is, are, were spending in front of the work. And it, it surpassed by, I think, uh, you know, almost 10 times uh, the second most uh, uh, work where, where, where people were spending time appreciating and engaging with the work. So, you know, after all of that success, the conversations started uh, occurring that they would have some interest in in in, in bringing the work to the collection, and uh, and of course for us it was you know for Desti for myself and for and for Ryan Schurer, who was the other coordinator of of the work with us as we held it uh, in conjunction. Uh, it was obviously a, a an incredible thing and a very honorable uh, thing that uh, to make this happen. So you know we 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 worked with them and um, and you know after some months uh, it was finally it finally happened and we're just very lucky because. Ultimately, uh, you know, connected to what I was saying before about what we want to do with the collection is ultimately we believe that this exhibition and this moment done more uh, to push digital art forward and to normalize and validate digital art as what it should be than uh, most, uh, you know, probably any any other thing, any other big sale, any other anything. And 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 we 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 think that this is very important. We think that we need to be inclusive uh, with the with the with with the regular folks, uh, uh, and we think that this is the best way uh, to do so. So yeah, that was a little bit, and I hope that that answered a little bit of your question. Yeah, it certainly did. Your role, as well as the the work of others, had a, a major impact in in terms of allowing others to experience and, and be exposed to digital art and really has helped to legitimize it, I think, in the eyes of our community as well as those outside of it. So so kudos to you for the role you played in that. I'd love to stick with the art thread for a little while here. Um, going back a ways, you purchased Beeple's first two tokenized works in November of 2020 for $66,000 each. Four months later, you sold one of those works, Crossroads, for $6.6 million, a handsome profit. What did you see in Beeple at that time that others did not? Yeah, for, so for me, it was very obvious that people had all the ingredients to be an absolute leader in the space. I the great opportunity of getting to speak with people before he ever did any of the releases. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember how many times exactly, but a couple or three or four times before generally discussing, you know, what they were thinking and, and, and you know, how to best approach, uh, you know, their entrance into the space. And, and during those conversations, I realized that 
that that that be that, that people was just uh, you know incredible that they were a creative genius that they had that they were incredib- incredibly disciplined which I think it's very important for you know for creatives this person had spent you know at the time 13 full years without missing a single day just trying to improve and 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 and, and continue and 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 for me that was just also fascinating and I thought that he had a personality that that was fair help him continue to push the narrative and again uh, you know there are some people that come around that you know that have this you know this this force this aura this 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 leadership component around them that I, for, for me it was it was very obvious that they were going to continue to bring extraordinary things uh, you know i also did i like to do my research i like to ask my circle i like to to do many things and then i i started asking as well like you know, I impressed them and, 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 and what is your opinion on people? And, and everybody that you spoke with just had incredibly positive things to say. Everybody also admired the, 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 the craftsmanship, let's say, behind their work. He's, he's really also, he's, he's now incredibly technical, incredibly, uh, incredibly good at what, they, at what he does, the best in the world. And, and, and honestly, uh, uh, for me, it was very obvious. So when this came to, you know, when this came to be, you know, I, I, I thought that this would be incredibly important work. And I wanted to add them to the collection. I want to note, though, that, you know, the sale that happened, even though I would, of course, lie like anybody would, I, they said that they didn't appreciate the, 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 the hefty profit. Uh, 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 in that, the reality is that it was not, it w- that was not the reason why this was made. This was not uh, the sole, uh, uh, the system behind that sale. Uh, uh, the sale happened really uh, 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 because I, I was, I, I, you know, there was a lot of, 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 of bigger sales happening in the space, but we had still yet to see a major secondary work that really validated both the, the ecosystem as a whole and people in particular as a leader in this field. And, um, and um, you know, honestly, uh, uh, when the conversations were happening, I also spoke with Mike uh, 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 that, uh, you know, that there was a possibility. And we collectively, you know, there was a time that I, I considered maybe, 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 maybe not, 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 not as crazy as it sounds, uh, maybe not, not, not taking it, but then, you know, uh, you know, in, in our mind, I thought it was very important to solidify it and bring a, a proper validated secondary work. And, uh, and yeah, I think it, it, it did work quite well. I did have a positive influence as well in many of the things that happened later. And it did, I think, establish a normalization. Uh, but yeah, that I think was important as well for the space. Definitely. I think, understand you're not an advocate for, for flipping and that's not the case here by any means, but to help to expose more people through that uh, secondary market to the fact that this is a legitimist area uh, and sphere of artwork. So kudos to you for, for identifying the, the skill and talent of people so early. Turning to another people work, Human One uniquely merges the physical and digital realms in a kinetic sculpture. You've exhibited this piece around the world what sort of impact has it made during its travels? Well, I mean, this is a major work. This is, uh, in my opinion, again, another showcase of why people is uh, is people. The reality is that this is what's such a leap forward, in my opinion, on bringing digitally native work to the forefront in a physically manifested way that is inclusive in nature and that people can engage and experience. You know, it has been my my personal experience, and this has changed over time because some people know me know that I I, I also started very early. Uh, we were the uh, really the first people, to my knowledge, to really bring comprehensive custom made exhibition spaces in the metaverse for a long time. I know this was I think in 2019, uh, and uh, but the reality is that over time and doing some exhibitions in real life. I've come to realize that when you're with, with other humans in the flesh experiencing something, it really feels, uh, you know, a little bit different. And, 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 and I think that this is, a, again, a great show of, of people bringing something that's unique, that's engaging, that is, that is, that is, uh, that is incredible uh, to witness, that has depth, that has narrative, that can only be done by somebody like people, uh, uh, and that it shows a lot of the quality, not only the quality, the, the general uh, uh, I think it's a great representation of these quintessential people in so many ways. It's also engaging. It's, uh, I know it fits very well in institution. This is why it has, it has fallen so well and, and had the success where it has. As you know, it started its path in Castello de Rivoli, a team institution in Italy, uh, where it was, you know, alongside, you know, uh, Francis Bacon and uh, many other incredible works. And, it, it, you know, it felt like a work of today, like a sculpture of today in the greatest band. It was also exhibited in M Plus in Hong Kong to incredible success as well. Uh, and again, uh, uh, it was now exhibited at Crystal Bridges. It is now still exhibited at Crystal Bridges with a couple extra places that are coming soon that I can't say yet, but uh, 
are, are, are extraordinarily exciting. And again, I think that very few works uh, I cannot think of, of another work. Uh, the only one maybe coming close to this is, uh, well, not close to this in different ways, but Rafik's work at MoMA, that is really doing the most to uh, show regular folks that, uh, that this is valid, that this is true art, and that this is a not only true art, but a highly, highly, highly engaging uh, 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 way of today. I mean, I can tell you that I've been in many of these exhibitions, and all of the engagement was with this work, uh, even with the incredible, incredible art that was around. You know, the 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 the, the lines, the 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 the, 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 the amount of people that are that, that you know that are experiencing and enjoying this is uh, it's fantastic. And I'm a huge fan. As you know, I'm a part of the uh, of the group that is also uh, you know behind this work and uh, and. Um, and yeah, I I I I I I would like uh, to see it continue on its journey, which is so far being a, a, an absolutely beautiful. I I strongly maintain that to me that's the single probably you know most significant work today out there. Yeah, today uh, uh, yet in this tokenized digital domain. Yeah, that sounds perfectly fair. It it certainly receives a wonderful reception wherever it tours and exposes new new people and, and existing members of our space to the beauty of what's out there in a, in a unique format as well. The RFC collection holds Trevor Jones' tokenized portrait of Satoshi Nakamoto, the architect. Mm. <laughs> this was the first digital work to sell for more than its physical counterpart. We continue to navigate the relationship between the physical and the digital. I'm curious how you think that interplay will evolve over the years to come. Yeah, again, I, I I I am still changing a little bit my mind with this as new information. I, I tried to, uh, to 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 change for 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 a very very long time. I thought we were going full full digital. Uh, you know, everything was gonna happen in the metaverse. I was really engaged and excited uh, with the general idea, and uh, and I think that uh, uh, there's a reason why. Uh, I guess because we didn't have the ability to do so for so long, even though digital was part of our life for so long, you know, the the, the first moment for this really started to happen, uh, there was uh, there was probably in my mind a little bit an, an overexcitement, uh, you know, around this idea. I do think that as we will move forward again, repeating what I what a little bit of what I've been saying so far, I think that these physical experiences really, really, really elevate uh, 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 lots of these digitally native works. That doesn't mean that all of them have to be like this. But again, now looking back, I I I I I I I prefer going to to see, uh, let's say, human one in person as a you know as a as a collector uh, uh, or as a as a as the audience than I might do to go into a metaverse like setting uh, to see a couple of work. But I think that that work by Trevor Jones was extraordinarily important because it signified again a change in dynamics, and it meant for me, or at least it was a signal. That the digital was now was now important. That 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 the digital was now in a way tangible. If that makes any sense, that the digital now really uh, some people were understanding that it was important to, uh, yeah, that it was important to uh, that you could actually, uh, yeah, uh, let's say own and collect some digital work. So that's that was a little bit my my general experience. Yeah, uh, and and I think that it's going to continue to to move towards that domain where. Well, in my opinion, the, the, the digital native work that have physical manifestations are going to be doing very, very good in the future. Yeah. Agreed. We've seen a lot of interest in, in installations as well as uh, releases that, that try to bridge that physical digital divide. RFC collection also holds the Bitcoin bull by Trevor Jones, the sale of which was claimed to kick off the last bull run. What is the significance of crypto themed artwork and how do you think this movement will be viewed in the future? I'm not sure if I have a very good question answer for this. I think that, like you know, with everything, by the way, the Bitcoin bull, the acquisition of the Bitcoin bull was not uh, a focus on the on the crypto uh, theme. If I may, if I may, if I may say, actually, funnily enough, I don't know if I should share this, but uh, it did have a different name at some point. At the beginning, it was actually called the Picasso's bull. There was a little bit of a of a of a thing there, and um. And uh, and yeah, but I do think that again, certainly this is something that uh, is now part of the culture, the crypto culture. I do think that the inclusion of some of the symbolism uh, and some of the you know what you see in general in society and in the engagement of society is important. Now, will it become the only thing that is important? Absolutely not, in my opinion. Will it have its appreciation, uh, its niche, and and its relevance uh, in this field? A hundred percent, I believe, very much so. Probably more than any any other thematic uh, theme or, or or symbol. But I, 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 to be honest, I haven't spent enough time thinking thinking in detail about that. But what I do think, though, is that the two works that you mentioned by Trevor are particularly relevant. Uh, maybe some of the newer comers might not know Trevor 
I know that much, but Trevor really was a major, major pioneer in 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 bringing again a a, a what I call a, a a serious artistic practice into the digital domain. At first, uh, you know, just uh, uh, accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment, and then digitalizing uh, in a sophisticated and interesting way some of the physical works as well. And always playing with the physical and the digital. I think he's a great pioneer, a lovely person, and, and again, a very, very historic figure in, uh, in, in, uh, in digital art. Yeah. Definitely a figure who will, I think, be viewed quite prominently down the road for all of the reasons that you've mentioned. For Miami Artwork Art Week, you uh, supported Andres Reisinger's public art installation, which really helped to bridge the, the physical and digital divide, as you've referenced. What was involved in that installation? Well, honestly, this is one of the most beautiful thing that has ever that, that I've ever been a part of. I am, I am so 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 happy. I actually, I'm gonna put a tweet out in the next few days, uh, a little bit talking uh, in detail about this experience. But, but let me tell you a little bit of the story, if if if, if I may. As you know, I've been supporting, you know, Andres. Well, not myself, but many others around for for some time. Andres is an artist that I that I hold in very very high esteem for for many 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 reasons that I could speak for hours. But, uh, you know, the opportunity came up for him to realize. He's famous and revered uh, takeover series here in Miami with uh, with some very very strong partners and uh, and in a beautiful location and in the, let's say in the right way uh, let's you know in a, you know with the with the right setting and ingredients to make this a a good a, a fantastic first uh, let's say deployment of 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 a technical version of this work I you know I I I do work with some of my uh, you know some of, some other let's call it friends colleagues that you know we were let's say that we 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 help financially make sure that this uh you know came together but uh you know andres is a perfectionist and 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 this was a great opportunity and we were you know that like we were you know a, a little bit a little bit below uh sorry a little bit above in the budget than what we were feeling comfortable after after uh you know after uh some of the yeah some of the support that we had already provided so i posted a tweet asking for two contributors, without saying who the artist is, what the exhibition was, where it was going, what partners we had, or anything, and um, and and in 25 minutes, eight people pushed forward, uh, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing of seeing that, like just, just the audience really wanting to support this. It was and 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 the type the, the the patrons that came forward were one was an artist, another one was a collector, another one was a builder, another one was a friend, another one was you know it was just so organic. And so beautiful. And then, you know, obviously all of this was used to uh, fully elevate the experience, to create a couple of events around it, one with Bulgari and another one uh, as well with Craig Robbins and, and Dakra and, uh, 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 and, and, and the Miami Design District and the collection. And, and it was fantastic. But it, was, it came together in a way that, 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 that it benefited everybody. Just before I get into, into how it did so, you know, I, I believe it was the most engaged work with in Miami, in all of Miami, with over 7 million engagement and countless other impressions online. And again, it was the, the, the cover of the Art News magazine. It, it was picked up by, uh, by, 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 by the majority, by all of the, all of the press, really. And it really solidified as one of the most important activations in Miami for the week. And, you know, this was so beautiful because everybody won. Everybody here won massively first andres as a creator humongous step up in his career for this series a uh, you know spotlight in one of the most important art weeks uh, globally around the year doing so with the right resources the right partners in a major way in the center of the design district you know with uh, with some beautiful patrons and then you know the 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 the, 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 the let's say the not the promoters but uh, at miami design district super happy they were able to bring a sophisticated uh, work that really caught a, some wonderful and beautiful attention during the week, and and they got to work uh, as well with Andres through the process and engage further. And then for the collectors, uh, sorry for the patrons, they don't they they didn't know this now uh, 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 when they did this, but the collectors are also going to get you know works from Andres related to this exhibition that uh, you know are 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 more uh, let's say more in value considerably more in value than their uh, uh, contribution. So again, very organically, everybody won. Everybody, uh, 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 you know, they, also the patrons were able to participate and, 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 and they were part, full part. Without them, it would have never happened of, 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 of bringing this together. And that, that's just a beautiful thing. So honestly, it really opened up my eyes. It gave me some amazing, amazing inspiration to, 
continue supporting artists in this way. And, and, and yeah, I cannot announce yet. I will be also saying some things, but, you know, from this and so the success, it is now uh, having a second activation in, in January uh, that will be announced very soon. And it will then, uh, there's another component related to what we did in Miami that is coming out as well early next year. And again, it just really served to elevate the Takeover series and Andres' career moving forward as a established artist, you know, globally. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, like, honestly, my happiest, you know, my happiest uh, in, involvement in any project, I think, ever. Wow, that's remarkable to hear. You, you've acknowledged publicly a number of the collectors and others who had a hand in, in this, including, I think we have a red beard here, G Money, Roger Dickerman, Particle Zone, Harold Aitan, and a number of other people as well. But it's it's fabulous to see. It's certainly the the thing that I that caused me the most FOMO for not being in Miami this year was to miss out on those beautiful installations. Yeah. You, oh sorry, no sorry sorry that that that, that, that uh, we 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 missed you and that uh, hopefully uh, soon we can uh, present other 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 similar things so that you can uh, you can engage with them as well. Looking forward to it. You've been a, a strong supporter of Murad Pak, and you've stated that Pak's. Red Pixel is the most culturally and historically significant piece in the RFC collection. What makes this piece and Pac's broader work so important? Did, did, did I fully state that or somewhat that is one of the? Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, again, I, as most people that know me, they know that I, I, you know, I have a very, very, very strong appreciation for, for Pac. I, uh, you know, I say this publicly and I, 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 also, I don't want to spend too much time, but I understand some not all, but some of the sentiment towards Pac that might be around. But I strongly believe that Pac remains as one of the most important, sophisticated, and, and profound uh, digital creatives that we have seen. Uh, uh, their capabilities are well beyond uh, anything that I have encountered outside of that. Uh, and, uh, and I think that, that, again, leaving a couple of the things that, that I think are fair, I think are very important. I think that Pac has been playing with conceptual digital art, in my opinion, a little bit more than, more than anybody, again, that I'm aware of. I'm not saying that everybody, that, but anybody that I'm aware of, and always doing so in a way that is profound, it's sophisticated, it's, it's ex externally well executed in a way that, that many, many others couldn't replicate. You know, not only the pixel, the red pixel, which, you know, it was, it was incredible because at the time, it was one of the largest sales ever. And uh, it, sparked, it sparked an immense amount of not only conversation online, about, you know, what is the meaning of art? What is art? Uh, is this considered art? Uh, which in itself, in my opinion, is a clear uh, show that, of course, it's art. But it also sparked, you know, I think hundreds of homages around this work. It sparked, again, a, a, a wonderful conversation in a way that, 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 that is still no other work in our collection or, or honestly that I've seen has sparked this type of conversation. Uh, I would like to point out, though, that it's not the only one. There's actually another work in the collection by Pac that I think is just as profound or more. Uh, there's called Fade. Uh, that is one that is a lot less known. And I know that Michael, uh, that is here uh, in this space, this will know about this work. But it's a, it's a generative, uh, it's an early generative work that is infinitely, you know, generating that changes shape over time unless you do something to the work and then, uh, you know, gets re restaped and changes the color spectrum. And it's just such a sophisticated work, such a complex yet simple and such a visually aesthetic and, and pleasant way in a way that is, but I still think that many of the creatives today could never, let's say, also produce this work, one of the major works. And, and I'm a big fan of, of, of these, again, more conceptual works uh, from Pac. They also, uh, just as another highlight, the, the Click 2 series in, uh, 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 in Super Rare. Uh, there's a few of, uh, there's, I think, two or three of those that are extraordinary. And again, he's always been an incredible, uh, the work C that he had, which is that 100-year-long uh, uh, video. Uh, uh, on, uh, on on super rare, like again, so many incredible uh, uh, conceptual works to be done with the digital, and I think that Pac has been a a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, contributor to this uh, along the way. Yeah, thanks for sharing those thoughts, Pablo. Really appreciate some of your your insights. I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here, but I'm quite curious. The RFC collection owns three pieces, including the master artwork for Doom Party, a participative X copy work released on Async Art. This is an innovative artwork that probably deserves more attention. Could you tell us what this piece involves and where you think it fits within the scope of X Copy's work? Yeah, I'm going to say you're really hitting everything, huh? You're really, uh, uh, it's amazing. You've done, uh, you've done some good, good research. I love, I love the things that are, that, that, that are coming up. Yeah. So uh, uh, another work that I think is a hundred percent overlooked by the general audience, where I think this work is 
I'm biased because it's in my collection, of course, but I really think that this work is honestly the most, uh, one of the most important works, uh, uh, if not the most important work that XCopy, uh, you know, has ever released. Even, even him uh, himself, you know, is very, very fond of, of this work. Let me tell you that at the time when this was acquired, again, I, I, I don't want to, please don't quote me on this, but I am pretty sure it was by far the largest acquisition in primary for uh, XCopy at the time several times over what their works were going in primary at the time. And I think that it contains all that is amazing about crypto, about blockchain, about Xcopy, and all that is amazing about the community at the beginning. So this work, as you know, was minted on, 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 on Async, which was a, a platform where you could have programmable works. And each of the works, so each of the nine different participants in there can change states. You can choose different states. So each of them, even though they're unique, they have, I think, uh, five or six states I need to double check exactly, but five or six states, uh, uh, three, four, I don't remember because also the rabbles was a similar idea, but three, from three to six uh, it states that you can choose where the, your, let's say, participant looks differently. And all of these are, 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 are held by different collectors and every collector that can choose to change uh, uh, their, their state, then it, it propagates ac across the world and the, the artwork changes for everybody else. The incredible thing is that this is quintessential X copy because all of them are figurative works, or the faith best, you know, that Xcopy is mostly known for, that of why he's, uh, of, of, of what I think a lot of people particularly are drawn to, uh, that he's more figurative works. And um, and again, what's incredible is that he has, it was the most complex acing work yet. There was also another layer that is called the Death Hand, where I can, that is also part of the collection, where I can move, place this hand anywhere I want in this work, and 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 uh, whoever I hover on top, I stop their ability. Uh, like I, you know, they 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 become doomed. They they let's say they die, and they lose their ability to change their state. And their you know their their participant is turned into a grave. It is it is an incredibly technical uh, uh, work that feels so important. It was so early as well. It was at the time all of the participants I think represents also important, or if I say uh, people that were very active at the time. And and yeah, I honestly believe that that, that work for Xcopy, it really brings together all of the genius of Xcopy in a way that is technically the most uh, that he's ever done. I can, I, I am pretty sure about that. Uh, and and then uh, again, uh, conceptually and, 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 and aesthetically, quintessentially Xcopy. So I honestly think what people will over time, of course, uh, when they do a little bit of more history and more research and they follow less the you know, the, 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 the floor prices and more, uh, you know, the historical context around different works, uh, this work will surely stand out as honestly one of the most significant works in uh, of, of, of Xcopy's career, for sure. Yeah. The participatory nature of it certainly captures a, an important time in the evolution of crypto art. Thanks for walking us through the background to that. I have one more art question before diving into a few more specific to, to collecting. In 2021, you acquired Dmitry Cherniak's self-portrait number one, which you have described as, as the pinnacle of his work. What makes that piece so special? It's actually uh, the one that I actually believe it's uh, because that work was one of the three uh, works that I've sold from the collection, uh, you know, at, at a little bit, uh, uh, let's say, higher levels. But uh, the self-portrait number one is now, unfortunately, not part of my collection. And, and this was the reason why as well. Uh, the reason why it was sold, it was very similar to, to with Vipo. It was important that Dimitri had been, you know, advancing considerably in the primary sales, but still not yet a major, you know, secondary that, that really solidifies him as one of the leading generative works uh, artists, uh, you know, this time. But the work that is still in the collection and that I actually not, I mean, this is, you know, not myself, like we, we should probably ask Dimitri about this uh, in particular, but it's called A Breath of Fresh Pearls. Uh, and uh, Dimitri claims or has claimed that it was both his favorite and, and, and yeah, the most important work, uh, at least at the time that it was created back then. It was, uh, again, I, you know, I don't like to narrow, uh, bring it down to this, but at the time it was by far Dimitri's largest acquisition. And I think the largest acquisition of any generative artwork to date. Uh, uh, um, and it was, a, 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 again, a, 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 you know, the, the, uh, up to Dimitri, he's one of his most, uh, uh, his, if not his preferred, and a work, uh, his preferred work. This was back in the day where generative art, and this is something that I, I, I predict will happen again, uh, at least in part of the ecosystem. But this was my uh, a preferred time for me for generative, where it was 
curated output, selected output. So from millions or for hundreds or thousands or whatever it is of, of different output, the artist would select, uh, you know, their preferred, their preferred output uh, in different ways. And I find that, uh, uh, you know, uh, fan fantastic. And you can tell uh, in the, in the aesthetics, uh, complexity and, and, uh, and, uh, and the beauty uh, uh, of some of the early works of not only Dimitri, but a, a few of the other artists that were creating before long form. Uh, not to say that long form is, is not it's not great. I respect. I think there's a, a lot of beauty in that as well, and I understand uh, why it's coming together and it's very impressive. And I, I I collect some long form generative art as well. But again, I I do think that there was something there's something very artistic about the uh, uh, you know the selection and the creation process and, and and utilizing code as a tool rather than as the end, uh, which I find uh, quite exciting. But yeah, Breath of First Peril is uh, one of another one of the more hidden. Uh, works in the collection, uh, similar to Cajetil Golit's Mint uh, or Sock, uh, that I think are really, really, really uh, uh, signify, uh, you know, some of the most important work that, that, that Cajetil Golit, Dimitri, or others, you know, have created over time. Yeah. Thanks for sharing those thoughts on, on these pieces. Really appreciate it, Pablo. Let's turn to a few uh, questions on collecting. You've said that an ideal collector isn't just about obtaining a single piece from an artist's portfolio, but takes a proactive role in boosting their career. You've already touched on this in part. What do you do to support the careers of artists that you collect from? Everything that is in my mind, uh, in my mind, in my power, everything that I can. And we understand that, you know, not everything is in each of collector's individual power. But if we all actually become ambassadors to the work and to the artists that we have, things eventually happen. It is so much more important you know, again, for artists to have a, a collector, in my view, a collector base with uh, 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 with these type of general patrons of people that are supporting your career comprehensively than just having, you know, a, a select few different people that just happen to, to support you financially by just acquiring your work. I think that uh, that is not sustainable. I think that that is not my favorite. Uh, I don't think that that's my favorite uh, way to treat, to treat this. So, yeah, so I always, uh, I always recommend that other route. Great advice. Thank you for sharing that. You co-founded the Museum of Crypto Art, which was one of the earliest NFT museums. What kind of need do you see for digitally native museums and galleries in this space? I think that the, the institutions are super important. I think that, of course, the rise of digital institutions will be uh, and is equally important. But but I honestly, uh, I I I have my 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 uh, you know my my activities set on uh, on trying to really. Uh, open up and engage with the more physical world. The reality is that, uh, you know, it's been now quite some time. And I would say that in the, uh, uh, you know, in most of the Western world, the lower, the, the, the early, the, the, the younger generation in the Western world, and honestly, globally, they're all aware of NFTs now, by now. Like, like they're really, everybody's aware. It's, it's completely there. So the reality is that it, it, it if, if people are not participating, it's not because they haven't heard, it's because in many cases, either they have no interest or because it's a little bit, uh, you know, more difficult. So I really believe that it is our responsibility to go out there to the world and bring, and bring, and bring, uh, you know, either both awareness and education uh, to what's happening here. So, so again, everything is important. Everything, everything is important. But I really, really believe that, that the institutional role in real life is ultimately going to do a lot more for the digital uh, uh, than the digital uh, than the digital, and, and, and this is just my view. I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, I, I, I I've seen I've seen what Refix work has done at MoMA, and uh, and I still think that it's going to take a long time for a similar digital institution to you know to bring some, this type of awareness and engagement with such a large audience. Thank you. Really appreciate those those insights. This week, the RFC collection donated a work to the Castello di Rivoli Contemporary Art Museum. What can you tell us about that work and, and what led you to make this donation? Well, I mean, that work is, is fantastic. It's uh, Agnieszka Suran's work, which is a, a, you know, an artist that, uh, that I think has, you know, has, uh, let's, uh, let's say, a more traditional uh, training and has come into the space in a way that, uh, that I think is very relevant, very, very, very thoughtful. It's a work that, I mean, I could spend a very long time talking about the work, but it, it, it has collected a lot of the... Uh, let's say, collective commentary online around the time of the pandemic, mostly. And then it has that transformed them into different mineral-like forms that have a digital sculpture and can also be represented as a physical sculpture. The reality is that like Castello de Rivoli has always been, and this is, in my opinion, and we need to, to really elevate this woman that is just incredible. It's like Caroline Christoph, you know, has been, is, is finishing her tenure as the director for this museum. 
and she has been at the forefront. She has been, uh, you know, alongside people's career as well now for a few years. Uh, that's where we saw Human One as well. And this work, in particular, Sentimentete, is a work that, uh, that, that was conceived in some way, in a way related to not directly Castello Rivoli, but, you know, uh, with Caroline. And, and again, it's a work that we really think it, it shows amazingly well, completely outside of what most people know in the space, outside of all the floor prices and all of those things. It's, a, it's an art-centric, digital and physical, you know, artwork that, that we find very relevant and that uh, it will go uh, very well in that institution. We're, we're great fans of, of, of the pioneering nature of Castillo de Rivoli and what they're trying to do. They were very early in supporting, you know, digital art. And, and I'm very thankful to Caroline. Would honestly just a little bit honored to uh, contribute a tiny portion to her legacy that I think, uh, again, if you haven't heard about Caroline, make sure you do a little bit of research, but she is. She is one of my favorite people, you know, in the world. She has done more for, for the arts than, than mostly every, anybody that I know. Well, kudos to you for, for making this donation and continuing to fulfill that role of a, of a patron as you, you do so effectively. As a longstanding collector in the digital art space, you've had the opportunity to watch some artists evolve and achieve significant success while others struggle to make their mark. Are there any qualities that you identify in an artist who is destined for success? Oh, yes. And I want to, I also want to be mindful here because, you know, I, I really, with what I say, uh, please take it in a constructive, in a very constructive and positive way. I've been seeing a lot of artists uh, lately in particular, you know, pretty much going outside and, and saying, we are artists, we can do what we want to do. Uh, and, and of course, as a concept of any other human in life, yes, you can do, anybody should be able to do. I, I am fully on board with that, with that idea. Everybody be, to be able to do whatever they think is right in their life. They, that's uh, their liberty. And they're, uh, uh, you know, 100%, I support that thought completely. However, I also think it's very important to take the consequences uh, from doing that. And in the same way, if you want to be a successful career, and this is a, a not a beautiful reality, but, but the reality, so we have to go with this. If you want to be a successful, uh, sustainable artist, there are components of your practice that work like a business and you need to make some decisions, some sacrifices and something in order to get yourself in a position to have that, 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 uh, you know, that type of career. So I like artists when I, when I, you know, I, I say this quite often when we're looking at something supporting an artist, we never just like a work and say, oh, we just want to, you know, accumulate and add this to the collection. It's no, we hear about an artist or about a work of an artist and we try to go in to the life of those artists, understanding everything about their practice, understanding everything about their personality. We, well, we like to see discipline. We like to see mastery of their tools. We, li we like to see a, a diligent artist. We like to see artists that are evolving from where they're coming from. We like to see artists that are focused and determined in, in, in what they're trying to, in the, in the releases that they're trying to put together. We like uh, organized, uh, organized artists, organized artists. We like a uh, of course, we like the creative component. Always, I'm not even mentioning that because that needs to be. Uh, it's so obvious that it's, it's at the center. But but there's many many qualities that really help an artist. And then uh, another major one for us is the personality. We really believe that having a you know in this world where artists are engaging so much, not only with the collectors but with the audience in general, having a bad personality is the one thing that no matter how good you are, I think it just it's it's gonna stop you from uh, you know from being successful. Just people just don't want to work with, I'll just say like this, with, with, you know, with assholes and with, and with difficult people. And, uh, and, and I really, really strongly believe that people should, uh, should really consider, uh, you know, the personality component as they, as they support artists in the longer term. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I, I again, I, 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 I like thoughtful approaches. I, I, I understand that some sacrifice need to be made. I do not think that everybody, I think that everybody's, again, I re repeat, I believe that everybody's free to do as they please. But if they want to follow a sustainable, successful path, I think that it is evident for anybody that looks a little bit closer that a more structured, organized approach while still uh, le le letting your creative fl uh, flow through you, it's, it's very, 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 very obvious that is the case. You can look, you, can, you just need to observe. You don't believe me, just observe, you know, try to look at those artists that are enjoying that success. And what is the one thing that all of them have in common? You know, they are, they are being very, very thoughtful and, and putting all of their emphasis in particular, you know, parts of the practice, being thought of over time. I'll give you just some examples so you can think about. But, you know, Tyler Hobbs is not just, oh, today I'm creative. I'm just, you know, throwing out a workout here. No, 
be like he worked for months for QQL, uh, you know, and, and every time that like, he does something, it's like months of work into presenting something. Beepo is not, uh, you know, just, you know, one day out here and there and just, no, he's doing, you know, there's many, Andre Reisinger is a clear example. Sofia Crespo is now, uh, you know, uh, 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 showing incredible maturity uh, and the results are coming for the artists that decide to, to elevate their practice. And for this, it's again, I, I, I love decentralization. I've been a huge ambassador of the blockchain, of the idea of decentralization. But some of the worst advice that I think I'm giving to an artist is nothing matters. You're, you're, you're an artist. So therefore, whatever you do is always, you know, it's always perfect. It's like, okay, okay you, you, you're free to do that. But, but honestly, I, 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 my recommendation is learn from many of the more traditional artists that really, really, really sacrifice their lives to actually have a proper, long-term, thoughtful practice. For me, it's, 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 it's very, 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 very obvious. I really appreciate hearing that that commitment to getting to know the artist and and observing some of those traits. As you've mentioned, there are many of them, but, you know, cre- creativity, discipline, mastery, seeing some evolution in their work. That's uh, That's helpful to get some insight into your thought process. You have mused about what an ideal collector base should look like for the transformation and mainstreaming of the digital art space, which you've said would include a mixture of DAOs, institutions, individual collectors, as well as investors. What are the benefits of a healthy balance of collectors? And are there certain groups you'd like to see more or less of in this space? Yeah, so again, that, that was a, that tweet had a little bit of a connotation also uh, with some of the other tweets that I uh, that I've been playing around with in the past. The reality is that, you know, the, the numbers that I gave are not necessarily exact. But this is also something I've been speaking with, with El Barbarroja that is over here about this quite a lot. I, I really, really believe that, uh, uh, that the collector base is so much more important than that, uh, to an artist than anything else. So if, if an artist, uh, you know, comes to me uh, uh, and they have the ability, let's say, to honestly, I understand that everybody should absolutely, please take this as a hypothetical. I am not, I, I, I'm not telling them to do this, okay? But as a, hypo, as a hypothetical, if an artist comes to me and tells me and, and, and is willing to do so, I prefer that their work goes to different institutions and different collectors that are going to really become ambassadors of their work, that are really going to be and, and pushing the narrative and showing the work and that, than getting a high price at auction, than getting a high price at a particular sale. Uh, that again, that I think everything is uh, the collector base is so, so, so important. And by the way, here, uh, I try to include DAOs or others as well as, uh, as, as you know, some speculators along the way, uh, which say a, a good portion is, is necessary. It's actually good uh, for the establishment of a, of a, of a mature, of a, of, a, of a sustainable market, of a stable, of a stable market, which in turn is very important for artists to, you know, again, to have a sustainable career moving forward. So I do, I, I don't want to with this say, that, you know, if you're not, uh, you know, a, a, a full-blown uh, art aficionado, you simply cannot participate. No, but right now I do feel that we should try to really, or artists would really, 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 really benefit from being in the right collections rather than to uh, just achieving the highest price, uh, maximizing price, which, which in turn over the future could, uh, as it has with some artists, play some, uh, uh, some difficult, you know, might, might backfire uh, in some ways. More great observations. Thank you so much for for taking us deeper into those thoughts that you've you've shared online previously. Pablo, you've been very generous with your time today. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we wrap up this call? Yeah, just in general, I am so happy with the elevation that we saw last week of digital art across the board. Not only, you know, today we spoke a little bit about Andres, but it wasn't Andres only. It was amazing. You know, I, I, I unfortunately missed many of the events that I, uh, or a few of the events that I've also gotten incredible positive feedback. But, you know, what Art Times Code with Untrain did in the Vizcaya with, uh, with the generative uh, 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 glass uh, as well, it was just a, a presentation and a sophistication that was really elevated, extraordinarily elevated. Uh, we saw, of course, the Andres, we saw the presentation of Beeple's uh, large kinetic sculpture at Faena as well, an extraordinary work that that uh, you know was 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 fantastic. Then we saw a lot of uh, in the fairs, in the in, in both of the fairs, some digital works that were incredibly well presented, that felt right, that felt like they belong in these fairs. And then you know we saw, of course, the operator, the operator exhibition that was just you know um, our absolute favorite, a huge elevation of of many of the things that we've seen so far. Then I missed the Yatreda tea ceremony, but I heard it was fantastic. 
uh, the NFT Now event was incredibly well to, uh, put together, another big elevation from the past. And overall, I'm sorry if I missed uh, you know some of them uh, around, I apologize. But honestly, I felt so energized, so inspired, uh, uh, so many things uh, 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 that really, really are clicking now that I'm super happy to see. And, uh, and yeah, I will be sharing some news both uh, with what we discussed at the beginning of this call, as well as a couple other, you know, news of some of our activities moving forward. That, uh, that yeah. And the last thing that I would say is again is that this is not only what I've witnessed, but I've I've received countless of messages from people outside of the digital that uh, that that immediately that like after this week they 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 got it, you know, they 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 they, they switched, they they understood, and and again, uh, I I have a little bit of availability bias at the moment, but the reality is that I I, I it is in my opinion the, mo- the single most important week for digital art since I've been a part of it, in my opinion. What a great summary and a wonderful place for us to wind down on. I'm I'm happy to see that that this space is continuing to to grow in the right direction according to you. You of course hosted some fairly auspicious events during Miami Art Week that we didn't have a chance to talk about, but uh, that operator performance as well as uh, sharing some of your physical installations. Pablo, you are a vocal advocate for the digital art space and and your efforts help to uplift and legitimize this emerging artistic medium. Thank you so much for joining us today to share your story. It's such a pleasure and thank you very much for having me. Hope, I hope we can do it again soon. Thank you very much and wonderful week. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. And don't forget to join us at our next collector's call.